Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. First up today, the Monroe team has their hands on that new 4680 Model Y from Austin and they just said it dropping the battery soon, so we're almost there. Some people were wondering why Monroe upgraded to the red paint if they're just going to tear it down, but remember this was probably an inventory vehicle meaning there are only a select few available so it's possible they didn't have a choice of any other paint color. And check out the mileage on this vehicle. This car does have the front casting as well which is looking pretty clean. More brokerages are sending out the materials to vote as a Tesla shareholder. This is what you're going to be looking at, all the different proposals, the board recommendation, and then you just choose for, against, or abstain. So be on the look out for years. As you saw at the beginning of the video, Tesla's end of quarter push is in full swing. And how about this? Very cool that Franz was actually helping deliver vehicles to customers. So it'd be a pretty special experience to get your brand new Tesla delivered by the designer of said vehicle. Green, the only shared an image and a video of the Tesla feature that many people have been requesting alternate routes when you're navigating in the maps. To be clear though, most people don't actually have this feature. Green said it's the last beta version 10.11.2. And if you're not seeing the feature, Green said, it just means Tesla did not activate the feature for your car, which they could do over the air. So maybe this is coming in the future, could give you the option to choose avoid highways or take a scenic route. I'm just making these up, but you get the idea of why alternate routes may be a nice feature. Now, historically, when we've talked about Nitsa and Tesla, it's had a bit of a negative tone. However, today we get some positive comments. Nitsa has a new chief in town, Steve Cliff, and he's saying that he wants Nitsa to grow its under understanding of autonomous vehicle tech so that it can better regulate the industry. Drive Tesla Canada is reporting that one of Steve's first acts at NHTSA was to actually release that crash test data that we got a week or two ago, the one that had all of the warnings and disclaimers about actually using it to draw any conclusions. Talking about Tesla, Steve said they can report crash data almost instantly compared to other automakers who may not even know their vehicles have crashed unless someone reports it to them. And speaking of Tesla, Steve said, I think we work well with them and when we've identified that there are risks, they've taken action and that's appropriate. And when it comes to new regulations for autonomous driving, Steve said, I think it's important to move quickly, but not so fast that we're getting it wrong. So overall, positive comments from the new chief at NHTSA, Steve Cliff. We've been talking about Tesla's Q2 deliveries and expectations basically all week. Nothing has changed. The line in the sand is still 250,000 deliveries. That quote is coming from Dan Ives. And we talked about how most of these analyst expectations are mostly irrelevant in light of the work that Troy Teslike is doing. That said, I only wanna highlight outliers from where Troy is when we get close to the end. And we have Mizuho analyst VJ Rakesh at 232,000, which is one of the lowest that I have seen. Morgan Stanley shared a note with some great overall EV data. Here we're looking at data for the month of May of this year. The global BEV sales, which is excluding hybrids and plugins, a metric I like to watch, 514,300 vehicles, up 64% year over year, and up 30% May compared to the month prior, which would be April. The top full BEV battery electric vehicle OEMs globally, Tesla number one, 57,000 sales, BYD number two, 54,000, and GM at 42,000. Now, if you're thinking, where is GM getting 42,000 BEV sales? It's from its joint venture with SAIC in China. Now for the top three global brands, we have the Wuling, that $5,000 little car sitting at number one at 34,000 units, the Model Y at 28,000, and the Model 3 at 23,000 both of the Teslas significantly more expensive than that $5,000 option. Ford sold 7,860 Mach-E's globally for the month of May. It was the third highest selling BEV model in the United States, 
behind, you guessed it, the Tesla Model Y and the Model 3. In point number five, they clarify GM's joint venture with SAIC and the Wuling Mini. However, outside of that, GM sold 1,831 cars in the United States, full BEV. Tesla's share of the global BEV market in May was 11% compared to 10% the month prior and 17% share so far year to date in 2022. And this is a simple and encouraging chart, just full BEV sales year to date through May for 2021 compared to through May of this year, up 77%, sitting at 2.4 million vehicles globally so far this year. And one more, now we're just looking at the month of May, the blue is 2021 and the green is 2022. This is BEV percent of overall auto market share. So in the United States, we are now at 5.3% for the month of May, up from 2.3% for the month of May in 2021. So the US still trailing Europe and China. However, the growth rate has been more than a doubling over the last year. Almost the same in China going from around 10.3% to 19.8% and Europe with a bit slower growth. So pair all of that encouraging EV growth data with the fact that Tesla is leading in luxury brand loyalty and is not slowing down. On a percentage basis over the last two years or so, only three luxury brands are seeing their brand loyalty increase, Tesla, Maserati, and Genesis. Tom Libby from S&P Global Mobility said, Tesla is a major force in luxury brand loyalty. Simply, these metrics are just calculated based by what percentage of customers choose the same brand when trading in or buying their next vehicle. Tesla once again proving to be an exception to the rule in that it was one of three luxury brands that did not experience a decline in loyalty over this time frame, joining Maserati and Genesis, which are far smaller brands compared to Tesla. Tom had some nice comments about Elon here if you wanna read them, but the story here is that Tesla owners, they're coming back to market in increasing numbers, but just as important, if not more important, they love the brand and they're getting another one. So this is an ominous, frankly ominous trend for the rest of the industry, something that has to be faced and it has to be acknowledged. Goldman Sachs put out a research note on Tesla's supercharger network and how it's such a vital piece of Tesla's ecosystem and the future and talking about opening it up to non-Tesla EVs. They covered things like Tesla being able to charge non-Tesla vehicles higher rates to once again encourage these people to maybe consider buying a Tesla. They said, today we estimate utilization across the supercharger network in the United States by Tesla drivers is in the mid to high single digits range on average during the day, although higher at certain times and in certain places. Therefore, we believe that in many locations, Tesla would be able to open its charging network with high incremental margins. They continued, Tesla said it plans to triple the size of its global network over the next two years. This was from comments on the third quarter call last year, which would be a target of 85 to 90,000 chargers by the end of next year or early into 2024. And the summary, we estimate that the incremental revenue opportunity could be one to $3 billion in a few years just from opening up the supercharger network. Although Tesla wouldn't necessarily capture all of this with relatively modest CapEx needs beyond what it would otherwise spend and drive between 15 and 75 cents of incremental earnings per share. Tesla Audrey on Twitter shared that with the generation three Tesla wall connector, it may be able to soon pair up with your mobile app to give you some extra functionality. Now it's not clear exactly what functionality this feature would give. I'm assuming with time, it'll be more and more, maybe things like better software management, more statistics and data, maybe some smart control type of features. We'll have to wait and see. So far, there's no word on when this functionality will actually be released. And remember, it's just Gen 3 because the prior ones don't have Wi-Fi capabilities. Here's the original tweet. I'll link it below if you wanna check it out. As you just saw from the Morgan Stanley data, EV sales in China are doing incredibly well. And here's one more chart to back that up. Here we have CPCA data looking at China passenger NEV wholesale sales blue 2020, orange 2021, and the green so far this year. They're expecting June to be a new record high, essentially right where my face is, potentially eclipsing this 505,000 figure from December of 2021. 
Now, I know that most people don't pay as much attention to Tesla electrification or even the auto market in general, but there are still so many people that aren't sure or maybe don't think that EVs are the future. But when you look at the data and understand the trends and where things are headed, it really seems like one of the clearest things out there. It looks like Tesla's VPP in partnership with PG&E in California is growing. This is that program where owners of Powerwalls can basically send some extra energy to the grid and get paid $2 per kilowatt hour for doing so. One user that joined this program, Rick Davis, ended up sharing an image that Sawyer picked up. This was the image showing 1,262 fleet homes at the time that Rick joined. And Tesla believes that this number could grow much higher to as many as 50,000 Powerwalls that could be eligible for this program which yes, does mean not everyone is eligible. Some users are trying to join, but it's saying they're not allowed. The reasoning right now is a bit unclear. Either way though, this is an awesome program and the financial incentives for these users really does have to be there. But as we trend toward a future where there is more of this in a ubiquitous fashion, it's just something I would love to see. So if you love technology, you will really enjoy this news that Samsung is seemingly going to be the first company to mass produce new chips using three nanometer technology. Yes, the lower the number, the better the tech. Basically uses less energy and is much more efficient and quicker. I think it's really important to cover this though because I could see many Tesla people saying this is going to be for Tesla for the Cybertruck because Tesla is working with Samsung and Samsung's building hardware for, for the Cybertruck and the next gen of vehicles, but we have to slow down with that. Real quick, before we get to Tesla, Samsung did say it has begun mass producing these chips. They're supposed to reduce power consumption by up to 45%, improve performance by 23%, and reduce area by 16%. And the Samsung co-CEO said they will be looking for new business and clients in China. And TSMC, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, is now planning two nanometer volume production in 2025, not to be outdone. So what does this mean for Tesla and its hardware for? as they have been rumored to be working with Samsung. This was from toward the end of last year. Samsung worked hard and a few months ago, they concluded the development phase of their new products aimed entirely at the EV market, people getting excited. The new batch of these more powerful devices will provide cutting edge tech to the upcoming autonomous vehicles, but will do the same in other areas like navigation, high definition images, native connectivity with smartphones in a way we haven't seen before, and for transmission of video and 3D games as a method of entertainment for the passengers on board. Sounds great. Tesla and Samsung's foundry division have been working on the design and samples of the chip from the start of this year. Remember, this was last year. Recently, Tesla decided to outsource hardware for self-driving chip to Samsung. It's virtually a done deal. However, don't forget this reporting talking about the new chip hardware for for Tesla and the Cybertruck. It would use the seven nanometer processing technology. This process is less advanced than the five nanometer tech that Samsung also uses, but it's been selected to ensure higher production yields and better stability of the chip. So most likely no, this next gen chip is not going to be used in Tesla's just yet. Something to watch here from Charlie Blello, the core PCE price index moved down to 4.7% in May, the third straight monthly decline. This is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, could have an impact on rate hike expectations. More and more people out there are now expecting maybe another 75 basis point hike in July. But after that, some people are becoming more optimistic that the subsequent rate hikes after that may slow or stop altogether. It feels a little optimistic. However, there is some encouraging data out there if you specifically look for it. And lastly, Jordan at The Limiting Factor just uploaded a video showing the teardown of the 4680 sale that he got from Cato Road. I'll of course link this video below. Jordan, have a great time. We're all eagerly awaiting to see what you find. That'll do it for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.